Good evening. The Dunedin City Council is asking the Labour Court for an injunction to stop 700 of its salaried staff going on strike. The strike's planned for midnight Wednesday and would affect essential services like water, sewerage and electricity. A spokesman for the council believes an injunction will succeed because of deficiencies in the way the strike was notified. Several university students spent a freezing night in the rain last night to prove a point about their bursary payments. On this occasion, they're not calling for more money, just more regular payouts. Kim Hurring reports. It looked like all the luxury of home. Tally, easy chairs, wood-powered washing machine. The students had gone to great lengths to get their message across. Well, firstly, of course, you get into the um, sleeping bag. <sighs> This is the art of sleeping in a cardboard box, it's is it? It's the art of sleeping in a cardboard box. I'm in a caravan normally, so it's not much of a step down to um, go here. And like I said, I had the door put over my head when, I, when it rained. And we had the bus coming at four o'clock in the uh, morning, like something at a Mad Max or something, just came flying through. Former Minister of Education David Longy had the honour of judging the best of the shanties and was impressed by the ingenuity. It's a very nice student way of uh, drawing attention to the problem, which... Uh, is one essential of administration here. The money's been available, they haven't had it. Uh, very pleasantly, they haven't blamed the government for that. The winners were treated to hampers of luxury food. The Royal New Zealand Ballet is in town tonight, giving a performance of the ballet of Jean Batten. It was a tight schedule with rehearsal this afternoon, but some of the cast offered to take time out to help a group of aspiring young ballerinas with their work. Jean is the company's special work for 1990. It recreates the era of Jean Batten and explores the mystery that surrounds her. It should prove an inspiration to these young dancers who are looking forward with lots of enthusiasm, if rather less skill, to their own debut next Wednesday. The Capham concert Selwyn Ballet has been around for years and it has a fine tradition to uphold, hence the need for some first-class instructions and not just in dancing either. Do you do these little bow things up here? Yeah, you better do them up. Right arm, left arm, crew back. Really put your foot. Do you think they have any potential? Um, possibly. <laughs> I think we've got a lot actually. I don't know about the others, mine's good. With a bit more work, they should get it right. Of course, there's always someone who wants to have the last word. OK, ladies and gentlemen, just let's do it once more. Now to a team with a little more skill. Tomorrow night's test against Jamaica at the Dunedin Stadium will feature a New Zealand team as dominant in their own right as the all-black rugby team. Today, Ken Nicholson had the chance to meet one of the sporting personalities he has most admired. So, this New Zealand has produced some fabulous sporting talent in the last decade, but one person who often misses the accolades given to the Devoys, Hadleys, Kerwins and Walkers is this Waikato netball player, Sandra Edge, quite simply, the best netballer in the world. To watch Sandra Edge in action is to watch a sporting talent with few, if any, faults. She's achieved a level of standard in the game which would buy and sell many of the other so-called superstars of their sports. It's always interesting to meet one of the world's sporting elite because they vary so much in personality. Sandra Edge is a person who almost thanks teammates around her for getting her to where she is. Those, those players, I'm so lucky to have been part of that era. I, I just, the memories, oh, I'll treasure forever. And perhaps that's got a lot to do with my attitude towards the game now. I'm a lot more relaxed and I understand what I'm doing a little bit more now. But, um, those players, oh, they were very, very special. Two years ago, Edge ruptured her Achilles tendon, well, an injury supposedly well sure to force her into early years. retirement. Sandra, maybe I could take you back to one of your blackest moments, your blackest moment almost certainly. When you had that injury on court, how did you feel? I knew exactly what I'd done because I've heard people actually describe what it's like to rupture an Achilles tendon. And I was a bit wimpy. But as far as getting back on the court, it just happened. And I guess I was determined, but I, I suppose I am. Whenever I want something, I usually will go full hog to achieve it. So it was never really an issue. And looking back now, I sort of wonder what all the fuss was about. But so she's back, and as good as ever. 
and tomorrow night allows sporting fans in this region to see one of this country's greatest sporting talents. The soldiers who died in the Great War will be remembered at dawn services around the south tomorrow. It's 75 years since Australian and New Zealand soldiers landed at Gallipoli, but the horror of that campaign hasn't been forgotten. Dunedin poet Paul Powell, better known for his campaign against the Clyde Dam, has written his own tribute to those who died at Gallipoli in the battle for the summit of Chonuk Bear. It's called Far, Far From Homeland. Far From Homeland, a poem to Lieutenant Colonel W.G. Malone and his New Zealanders who died in the battle for the summit of Chunuk Bear, August 1915. He sprang translucent in Aegean sun from stone and rifted clay on crest of Chunuk Bear, led me to where they lay jumbled in hollow of the ridge like children torn by some preposterous game in place of broken toys. Blood poppies skewered them through and spears of thorn scrub feasting on men far, far from homeland. At Chunuk Bear, I think, was not a matter of shame. I take terrific pride in what New Zealanders did then and it wasn't their fault. But had they been supporters, they should have been by the English down at Suvla Bay, they would have rolled right up the peninsula and they'd been to Constantinople, there was no doubt about that. And you, high country musterer, gut shot, eyeless face to sky, when will you see again the Ice King spires flaring at dawn westward of Nokomai? What of you, plainsman? Do you feel blade splitting earth grain, curling the furrow wave upon wave, cleanly as chisel? Where are your hands that steadied plough to strain of Clydesdales on hill brow? Can you still hear the leather creaking harness jump of swingle bar? Taste rain's warm spittle on your face? Go back to homestead lights across wide par? What shall I tell them, spirit keeper, at Otaki and Traquea, of bloody angle and despair of exiles? We are long dead, our agony and yours disturbed by time and ocean, to each of us our separate immolation. Say only this, that we, the few, the fay, who saw the narrows on that August day, took the crest, held it, and now rest on Chunuk Bear, far, far from homeland. We are all New Zealanders, and if we have the same spirit that the Anzacs had, and put that into the future, New Zealand will go forward. If we're going to think about each individually about ourselves or ethnic groups too much we're going to lose watch your dressing right. oh That item from Kathy Graham and Paul Powell's poem has just been published in a collection of his work called Perfect for Journey. Goodbye, we'll be back Thursday. Good night. 